Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about tips for shooting football and I'm going to be doing it as a complement to my other video called Sports Photography Tips, Tricks and Examples which I'll link at the end of this video as well as in the description below. If you haven't seen it, please watch it because both of them will go together well. Now, there's a lot of stuff on that other video that I will not cover in this one. In this one I'll just cover things that are specific to, to football and um, yeah let's get on with the show so if money was not an issue you'd have three maybe four body cameras for a football match in my personal preference and because i'm a canon shooter i'd go with the 1dx mark ii as for lenses you'd want a 400 500 long saddle photo a 7200 medium range zoom and a 16 to 35 wide angle behind the goal with a remote now back to reality you probably have two camera bodies and two lenses if you're lucky and if you only have one camera body and one lens, then that's normal, right? We've all been there. You work with what you got. If you could only have one lens though, I couldn't recommend enough the 7200 f2.8 IS version, Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, whatever you can afford. It's the most vers versatile sports lens you can ever buy. And it's just, just not for football for every single sport. It's just a magnificent lens. Now, knowing your gear, your reach really, uh, will affect your positioning and we'll go over the positioning into more detail in just a moment but knowing how far you can grab a shot will depend on how close you need to be to the action so to speak right as for settings it depends on many factors but generally speaking i'd recommend you go into manual mode with a shutter speed of at least one one thousand of a second to freeze the action pick your widest aperture possible so that's a low number like f2.8 maybe f4 and for iso just leave it on auto right you can test a few shots before the game to see if you need to make adjustments now, i'm not gonna go into detail on the exposure triangle in this video you can search youtube you'll find tons of videos maybe i should do one in the future but for the moment i'm just going to focus on football specific settings not the exposure triangle now back to positioning now there's quite a lot of to consider right is the game at night and therefore under floodlights if so the lighting should be somewhat even on all corners of the pitch but the less professional the game the most likely you'll find how hard it is to shoot night games without proper gear this is when you truly appreciate the difference in gear in my opinion how your gear handles and performs under low light situations now if the game is during the day then you'll want to see where the sun is if the game is, say, between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m., then the sun will be right above you, no matter where you are. And if there is no clouds, the lighting will be hard and you'll get hard shadows. If the sun is low, then you'll want to position yourself so that you have the sun to your back. You do not want to shoot against the sun, as the players will be backlit and you'll struggle. Sometimes you don't have a choice, but if you do, remember to always have the sun to your back. Now let's look at the actual football pitch. If you're shooting a match with three officials, so a referee and two linesmen, then you'll have one linesman covering one half of the pitch and another one covering the other half. You don't want to stand in those sides for obvious reasons, right? If you get the action in front of you and the linesman is covering the last defender, then you gotta get crappy pictures. You don't want that. Uh, another place you cannot stand on is behind the corners, like directly behind the corners, unless you're extremely far back or behind a security barrier like publicity boards or whatnot. And last but not least, you cannot be behind the goal, though I've left a star behind the goal because you can set up a remote camera, you just can't be there yourself. Now that we've covered the areas where you can't be, Let's look at the ones where you can be. Now keep in mind that these might be more or less restricted depending on the match you're photographing. If you're photographing a Champions League, Europa League or any major football league match, then there are specific areas where photographers are assigned to. Anyway, I digress. Now looking at the map, you can see the areas where you can or should sit. Right now, keep in mind, this is my opinion. Other people might think differently than me. Now you'll notice two shades of green, right? And one yellow slash orange. The bright green areas are the ideal areas to sit as that's where you'll have the action coming towards you and you'll be able to cover a wide angle of the field. If you're on the far end of the pitch, 
then you need to be careful not to get too close to the goal as you'll start going blind, so to speak, to some areas of the pitch because the goal itself will block your view, right? Now, as I'm speaking, I'm showing you guys examples of exactly what I'm talking about so it's easier to understand. You'll also notice that the areas near, near the middle of the pitch are intentionally blank. And that's because while you're okay to be there, the vast majority of the pictures you'll be taking of the players' backs and you and those don't make for a good picture, right? You want to see the players' faces and the ball. Now, the exception to this would be taking pictures of the starting 11s or similar situations like a minute of silence or if the tunnel of the actual pitch is near the middle if you want to take pictures of the players coming out and stuff like that. Otherwise, as far as the actual game is concerned, being near the middle, in my opinion, is the worst place you can be at. Now, regardless of the zone you pick to sit on, remember you have to have a safe zone between yourself and your gear and the line of the pitch and the players. Now, you do not want the players coming towards you, say, in a tackle or disputing a ball and get yourself hurt, or even worse, the players get your gear destroyed or a combination of all of those. Accidents happen, so make sure you do everything in your power to avoid them, okay? Just keep a safe zone. It's better to to have a less okay shot, but everyone be okay, than you get sued and whatnot. So just keep a safe zone. Now, there's a lot more I could cover here that I would consider important to get a good football picture, but I'm repeating myself. So as I have already covered those topics on my other video, yes, the other video is for sports photography in general, but most topics there apply to football. So again, I recommend you watch that video too. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that thumbs up. It helps a lot. And subscribe to the channel. That way you'll be notified when new videos come up. And if you want to see more, just click right there. Thank you very much. See you later.